Hello everybody. There are many things on earth which makes a place likable, hospitable or special. About one such thing we are going to see in this video. In my previous video on Tamil Nadu, we saw about its physiological divisions and its drainage. In this episode, we will get to know about its climate. Welcome to my channel. If you find my video interesting and informative, then touch the like button. By doing so, you would be encouraging me to post more such videos. After watching this video, you will be able to identify the various seasons and the different types of climate prevalent in Tamil Nadu. Besides this, I will be trying to explain some challenging topics such as the Coriolis force and the monsoons. Come, let us explore. We very well know that the sun's vertical rays fall in between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. As a result, this region called the tropics experience sunlight all year round. Being very near to the equator, Tamil Nadu experiences a very hot climate. Bordered by the seas, coastal Tamil Nadu experiences a tropical maritime climate, whereby the oceans influence the climate of that region, making it not only hot as it is in the tropical zone, but also cool as it is nearer to the sea. Western Tamil Nadu is bordered by the mountain ranges, whose altitude lessens the temperature of the surrounding places. The climate noticed here is mountainous climate. And the region we find in the middle, being far away from the sea and far away from the mountains, experiences a very dry climate. So, the factors affecting the climate of Tamil Nadu are nearness to the equator, nearness to the sea and nearness to the mountains. At a certain time of the year, the sun's rays fall below the equator and so the sun's southern hemisphere is hot whereas the northern hemisphere experiences cooler climate. As a result, during the months of January and February, it is winters in Tamil Nadu. This is because, due to the spherical nature of the earth, the sun's rays do not fall proportionately in both the hemispheres, and the northern hemisphere receives only slanting rays from the sun. But during certain other months, northern hemisphere receives direct sunlight from the sun. So, during the months of March, April and May, the temperatures soar to 40 degrees in Tamil Nadu. Another major determinant of the climate of Tamil Nadu is the monsoons. What is a monsoon and where does it stand in the whole picture? Of the three types of winds, monsoons fall under periodic winds. Periodic winds are winds that blow in a particular direction at the same time of the year, every year round. First, we will get to know how and why these monsoons form. We've already seen that the sun's rays fall in the northern hemisphere at a particular time of the year. And as such, this region experiences high temperatures. High temperatures create low pressures, which signifies lesser air in that area. Whereas the southern hemisphere being a bit cool experiences high pressure. By pressure we mean the air pressure. Take two beakers of water. Beaker A has more water and beaker B less water. Connect these two with the hose. What happens? Water in beaker A experiencing high pressure flows into beaker B which has less water and so less pressure. Thus maintaining an equilibrium. The same thing happens in the atmosphere too. The large volume of air signifying high pressure moves towards the low pressure area. The speed of rotation especially at the equator makes the air, sea currents etc. bend towards the right in the northern hemisphere and vice versa in the southern hemisphere. This phenomenon is called the Coriolis force. What is the Coriolis force? Imagine two persons, one P and another E, moving in a straight line. Why I name them so, I will tell you later. 
Their tracks are placed apart. They pass a ball between them as they run. Persons P, E and the ball, all three of them move in the same direction and at the same speed or velocity we will call it. So the movement is synchronized. Suppose one of them travels fast. What happens? They miss the ball. This is because the ball has a high velocity as that of the thrower. Here, E is the thrower, whereas P having a lesser velocity couldn't reach the ball. The same principle when applied to a circular track. Both P and E had to make a full rotation at a specified time. Compare the velocities of the two people. E has a higher velocity, whereas P lesser velocity. E throws the ball at P. Having a higher velocity, the ball overshoots P. The same we will apply to the surface of the earth. We very well know that the earth rotates from the west to the east. A person near the pole is P and the one on the equator is E. Now you know why I name them so. The same thing happens with all the moving objects on the earth. The winds when they blow from the equator towards the poles tends to turn right. Shall we go below the clouds and see how it appears on the surface of the earth? The winds are actually blowing straight up. But for a person on the ground, it appears to blow from the right. This is because the winds blowing from the equator has a higher velocity than the person below and hence it appears so. This perception on the ground is referred to as the Coriolis force. From the Indian point of view, these winds blowing from the southwest is called the southwest monsoons. We again go back to the basics. P throws the ball back to E. This time the ball misses E. The ball's low velocity causes it to fall short. So also the moving objects on the earth's surface rather than flowing south tend to drift to the left. From the Indian perspective, we find these winds blowing from the northeast. Monsoons in India are classified into southwest monsoons and northeast monsoons. The southwest monsoons. Laden with moisture from the Arabian Sea, it blows across Kerala and reaches Tamil Nadu around the beginning of June. Sadly for Tamil Nadu, the western guards which form the western edge of Tamil Nadu blocks those winds. As a result, Kerala receives most of the rains and Tamil Nadu doesn't benefit much from these winds. This demo will explain how mountains influence the climate of a region. When moisture laden clouds come across high rise mountains, they lose their capacity to hold on to the moisture content and hence fall as rains on the windward side of the mountain. The light and dry clouds on the contrary skirt over the mountains and gradually disperse as gentle showers. And Tamil Nadu is on this leeward side. In the month of October, Southern Hemisphere experiences low pressure. Northern Hemisphere will have high pressure. The winds blowing from the north will get deflected by the Coriolis force and thus seems to blow from the northeast when absorbed from the ground. In India, these winds are referred to as the Northeast Monsoons. These winds, when they reach Tamil Nadu, they will be carrying with them the moisture from the Bay of Bengal. 
Tamil Nadu will experience heavy rains. In fact, half of its annual rainfall is received from this monsoons and it lasts till mid-December. Another major determinant of the climate of Tamil Nadu are the cyclones. When the low pressure area builds up, air from the surrounding high pressure area flows in towards the low pressure area. Due to the rotation of the earth or more exactly due to the Coriolis force, The winds blowing from the opposite directions converge to create a spiraling motion which is anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere and vice versa in the southern hemisphere. When this phenomenon occurs in a large ocean or sea, we call it a cyclone. Cyclones are large air masses that rotate around a center of low pressure. During the month of November, they originate in the Bay of Bengal. Almost the whole of Tamil Nadu, especially its coastal areas, benefit much from these monsoons. Nearly half of its annual rainfall is received due to these cyclones. A list of the various climates of Tamil Nadu and which months they are prevalent are here. You could clearly see that the monsoons dominate Tamil Nadu's climate and being in the tropical belt, it experiences a hot climate too. Hence, we can conveniently categorize the climate of Tamil Nadu as a tropical monsoon climate. Thank you.